Roland VR50 HD all-in-one audio video mixer is the audio video mixer that I've been waiting for. And the reason is this. A lot of audio video mixers require you to convert your inputs before you take it to the mixer. So if you have a standard definition camera and then you have a high definition input camera and you have a computer, you can't feed that all into the mixer, into the video switcher, until you convert it to a compatible input signal to the switcher. Well, what Roland has done is taken and put six scalers, six scalers, that's a huge number of scalers, in this compact audio video mixer. So I can take computer signals, for instance, I have a MacBook hooked up here that I can feed into uh, the mixer, the switcher, and it'll go ahead and convert that signal. I've also got three cameras that I'm bringing in, and it will take SDI signal, uh, which is a digital signal. It'll take a standard composite video signal off of a handy cam or any compact video camera, and it will scale that up to high definition. Now, of course, if you take a standard definition camera, you're never going to get a high definition picture, but it will mix with other high definition sources. So you can use just about any source in, and it'll also then send signals out in just about any sort of format that you want, including streaming. So I have a computer hooked up here with a streaming signal coming off the USB output. And I've got a monitor back here that's hooked up to a standard uh, HDMI video output. And those two I can control separately. So I can take just about any type of input signal, uh, computer, camera, video recorder, and plug it into this unit, the VR50HD, mix them together and get a beautiful looking output that I can feed on the web for streaming while I'm doing live feed. And then there's also an additional aux output that I can use that I can feed, uh, say, a foyer monitor or, or something like that with. It is also a complete 12 channel digital signal processed audio mixer in the same chassis. I've got four microphone inputs and then I've got an additional eight aux inputs that are in stereo pairs. The beautiful thing about this also is the VR50 HD has a touchpad here. So a lot of the controls that I need are right on the touchpad. I can get into the digital sig signal processing for the mixer just by touching that. I can select input signals and routing, and I'll show you a little bit about that in a bit. But it's all right here on the touchpad. So you've got a 12 input digital signal processed audio mixer combined with a six input digital video switcher and it actually has even more inputs that, and I'll show you the back panel. This is super exciting stuff that's going on here, but I say six input because there's six scalers. So let me show you a little bit about that. First of all, I have input one selected here. You can see it lit up. And I have a multi-viewer built in. Well, what's a multi-viewer? If you recall old video suites, they had banks of monitors up on the wall, and you'd have cam one and cam two and VTR one and two. You'd have separate uh, monitors for each input source. Well, now the way we do it is with a multi-viewer, and we let the computer inside window each of those inputs and put them on one screen. So we can put them on the touch screen of the VR50HD right here, and it comes right up. I select multi-view, just as I have here, and I've got an output of that. The monitor output can go on to a large screen. In this particular case, we've got a standard 24-inch computer monitor that you can get for $199. Or you can put it on a full-sized flat panel if you want, if you want to put a, a large screen in the room. We do that all the time, use 42-inch or 50-inch flat panels up on the wall so a whole uh, suite of people can see the signals. So I'm going to go ahead and show you on this larger monitor rather than the touch panel what we have. The multi-viewer gives me the four input sources that I have available here, uh, which is one, two, three, and four. And this one, like I said, I have three cameras hooked up. And then I have a computer signal output here. I have the preview, and the preview currently is showing me one of the inputs here with a superimposed what we call lower third. The lower third is the lower third of the picture. I can put a logo on that. I can put names on there. I can pull up a name and a title and put that on there. You could also go ahead and key in words. If you want to put words over the top of the picture, you can go a key in a box of words. There's a lot of things you can do here to get information out, uh, worship uh, chorus type words. All of that is capable with the VR50HD. 
In this particular uh, case, this is blank. I don't have a still store available here, but if I wanted to, I could go ahead and store a logo. So if I want to always have something I can fade to, a church logo or some other uh, still store or a scene, I can go ahead and load that up and it would appear right there as a fifth input. So I've got the four actives plus my still store. I've got preview and I've got program. Again, can put that on a large screen. And that comes all included in the package here. You don't have to buy a separate multi viewer. A good multi viewer runs you $1,400 to $2,400, depending upon uh, where you get it. And you have to then have access to all the inputs. Roland's built that all in for you. So, six scalers, the multi viewer, all of that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just a really compact all in one package. So, let me show you a little bit about what this will do. I can go ahead and just uh, selected cut here. So, you can see on the program output and behind me that uh, cam two is now taken, three is taken, it's just a cut, simple switch like that, or I can go ahead and take the uh, computer output that I have, and if I wanted to, this could be live video, it can be anything that you can produce on a computer. Now I can go ahead and do a uh, fade or mix, so it'll take a little bit longer to fade, you can see that input, go ahead and fade, just watch that right there, see the fade, I can set the fade time up, and so it's very, very easy to operate. Don't have to worry about T-bar handles, all of that type of thing. The fade is built in. Now, if I want to take this lower third here that I have and superimpose it on the program output, I just go ahead and call up the picture-in-picture -picture key, and boom, up it comes. Now you can see that I have it on the program monitor there. It's coming out on the stream, so the live stream that I'm feeding to the web also has it up. And again, I can run a different resolution, say I have a, a slow connection or I don't want to pay for a high-speed connection to upload, I can run this at a lower resolution than I'm running the main feed here. So I can separate those two. And that's super exciting because you can't do that with a lot of units. It's whatever resolution you pick comes off both the stream and the live feed. That's not the case with the VR50 because it's got more scalers built in even to the output. So uh, you can separate those two. Then I'll go ahead and take that lower third off by simply pressing that key and you can see the lower third comes off. Very easy to operate. Uh, it, it just doesn't take much time at all to have a professional looking production. So then let's take a look at the touch panel. You can say, well, how do I, how do I select what input is on uh, input one? I simply go ahead and go to input assign and then on the touch panel here I have a choice of the SDI feed, which is a, again a digital video feed, and there's uh, standard SDI and there's HD SDI for high definition. I've got HDMI, which is the standard small connector that the flat connector you see on the back of a flat panel, which is typically high definition uh, signal, so you might use that for uh, a uh, uh, disc player, something like that. I've got a composite input, which would be your standard uh, low definition video input for uh, a, an inexpensive camera, and then RGB or component input, and that's where the computer goes in. So I simply touch one of those, and I go ahead and, and it'll select that input. So away we go, and back it'll come. Then we go ahead and have uh, the same thing for two and the input three here. And to go ahead and on the input three and four, you don't have the composite input, you just have the SDI input and the HDMI inputs. So you can run a couple of computers in here. You can go ahead and run a couple of cameras. If you want to run a third composite, like cheap camera in, then you just simply pick up a scan converter, something like this, that takes a standard low de definition video out and makes an SDI uh, output that can feed in here. So you can have uh, three low resolution cameras plus a computer if you want to, but then you can upgrade as you go along. And you can get uh, cameras with SDI outputs for $2,000 now. So it's, it's not super expensive. You don't have to go to a studio camera to get a high definition SDI output. Uh, so uh, you're capable of, of making that all happen and fairly inexpensively here. So let's go ahead and go back to where we were. Uh, to get out of that, I simply go back to the multi-viewer here, or take off the input assign, go back to the multi-viewer, same thing that I have up there. And uh, output fade, again, is very easy. You can go ahead and do a take. You can fade to black, fade back up, uh, works great. So let me show you a little bit about the back panel and all the different things you can plug in and where you go ahead and take your outputs out to feed uh, your, your web stream and your main live video feed. 
I want to show you now how to plug in the inputs and how many inputs the VR50HD has. First of all, the HDMI inputs. As you can see, that's that little flat connector, the 1080p type of connector you see on your flat panel. So I can go ahead and plug in a DVD player, a media player, uh, any source that has HDMI output. And again, the uh, scaler will go ahead and run that right through and match it up with the other inputs at the uh, resolution you're going to be mixing at. One thing to be aware of is, is that this mixer, the VR50HD, does handle copy protection. So there are a lot of mixers that don't handle copy protection. If you run copy protected material into the HDMI, such as a Blu-ray that's a commercially produced Blu-ray, a Disney or anybody else's uh, copy protected Blu-ray, then it will pass that to the HDMI output only. You will not get it on the web stream and you cannot get it on any of the other outputs. That is a, uh, a condition of the license for copy protection. So just be aware of that. If you get a blank screen when you're trying to mix, it's because you've got copy protection coming in here. So you can turn off the copy protection feature or use non-copyrighted materials and, and then everything is functional off the HDMI inputs. You've got the SDI inputs here, which are either standard definition or high definition. Again, that's a digital signal uses a BNC type of a connector, and you have four of those. So if you recall the touch panel that I showed you, you could select HDMI or, H or SDI on any of the four inputs. Then you have two composite inputs. Those are a BNC connector, but a lot of times you'll see them as an RCA or phono connector on the output of a consumer video camera. And you just need to have a little um, RCA or phono adapter to BNC and plug right in there. And then you have two computer inputs. And I showed you before I had a computer plugged in with a graphic. That's where I would go ahead and plug that in. If you want your worship words, you'll go ahead and plug them right in there. Uh, so two computers can run in. And again, I can plug in uh, uh, inputs into all of these and then select with my touch panel which ones will be active into the particular channel of the mixer. So that's really exciting. You don't have to patch and unpatch. Once you plug everything in here, you can slide it back and not worry about patching and unpatching. And a lot of other mixers, you only have the four inputs and you have to adapt them, you have to change them, you have to unplug something. With this, you don't. Audio-wise, you have four microphone inputs with 48 volt phantom power available. Like I said, digital signal processing on those. And then eight aux inputs in stereo, quarter inch or RCA uh, on the uh, uh, one, two, three, and four here. Okay, then you have the outputs. Audio out is balanced stereo left and right, plus an aux balanced output, excuse me, unbalanced output. You have uh, program and aux out uh, computer, or what we call RGB. You have the streaming outputs, USB 2 or 3. So in order to get a full 1080 stream, you need to use USB 3, but you can use USB 2 and get a lower resolution stream. And for most streaming, 720p is going to be fine, and I've seen a lot of church streams at a lower rate than that. So you don't have to have 1080p all the time on your streams. Uh, a lot of people don't have the bandwidth to handle that, but you can do it on this, not, not a problem. And then you have HDMI output on program and an auxiliary. Remember I said there was an auxiliary video output that you can feed a foyer feed or an overflow feed out of that is separate. And you have the multi-viewer output. If you recall, I had a separate 24-inch uh, computer plugged in. Uh, I use that output. I can use a 42-inch or 50-inch plasma off that as well and put it on the wall. Uh, then the rest of this is power. You've got RS-232 if you want to go ahead and control it with a touch panel like a Crestron or an AMX or other type of system for remotes. Make it very, very simple. Say you have a weekday service or a memorial service, funeral, that type of thing. You can plug this into a control system and get your video up and running without somebody, training somebody on the whole mixer. And then you have, of course, the, the power. I do want to show you something. I'm going to flip this around and show you have a USB memory position here as well. So it takes a memory stick and plugs right in. So all the settings you have, all the digital settings, you can record on that USB memory stick and then just come back and download that. So all your settings are there and complete. If somebody else wants to set it up a different way or you have a different need for a different show, you can go ahead and record that. And so both of you can use the same unit but have your own settings. So you can see all the inputs and outputs that we had on the back now come right to the front, easily accessible by the touch panel that I, as I showed you before. And then you can easily uh, operate this thing uh, just 
get a super professional production with a lot of easy operations, not hard to understand, you're not going to get lost, uh, but it does have a lot of capability. Like I mentioned, the audio uh, mixer has three band EQ on each input, on the mic inputs. Uh, you've got one uh, full parametric and a, and a couple of semi-parametrics. Uh, you've got delay on all the audio inputs so you can synchronize audio with video so you don't have the mouth moving and then the audio coming in uh, at a different time. So they've thought of that and then you've got a separate audio sync for your aux output, the feed out to the foyer or another monitor or delay feed of some sort. Uh, so everything is all synced up, the audio and the video, it's going to look professional. So if you want more detailed information about the VR50HD, simply go ahead and click on the link on the bottom of the video and you'll get right to our ccisolutions.com website where we've got full information on this uh, in detailed form. Or better yet, give one of our technology experts a call. They'll go ahead and walk you through it, talk to you about your application, how this is going to best work for you. So give us a call at CCI Solutions or click on the link to ccisolutions.com where you'll always get the very best available price.